So, healthy bone is trabecular bone. Now, if you don't see trabecular bone, what are the other things we may see? First of all, as dentists, we are very good recognizing periapical lesion in general. Periapical lesion means either abscesses, granular tissue, scar tissue, which it is, we can't tell, obviously, and we don't care because whatever it is, it is not trabecular bone. Now, it's not that we don't absolutely care. If it is chronic infection, I'll cover it. We do care about chronic infection there. But if it's not trabecular bone, either it could be lack of bone, which is osteopenia, or it could be sclerosed bone. Now, sclerosed bone, you may think it's a good thing, but not necessarily. It's important for you to recognize sclerosed bone because when you're making your osteotomy, it's going to be very difficult to get through it and you need to modify your osteotomy if you're working in scleros bone. But 98 out of 100 times, the trabecular bone is there. You have to look for periapical lesion. I mean, our issue in dentistry, most likely, is going to be periapical issue, uh, lesion. Now, periapical lesion, if it's a chronic periapical abscess, what happens is the pH of the area gets reduced. It becomes acidic. Now, if it's an abscess that the patient developed in the past two, three months, you don't have to worry about it. By the time you go there, extract the tooth, curate the area, you're good. But if it's a tooth that patient came to you, had an abscess, took an x-ray, said, hey, you got to do a root canal or something, said, okay, I'll call you, and Three years down the road, patient comes, now there's a root stop there. We've all seen those patients. Root tip says, okay, doctors, finally I want to do my filling. And you look at it, it's just a root stop. Take an x-ray, mm -hmm. it's a little root with a big abscess around it. Now, don't think you can take this out and just put an implant, you'll be fine. Because for the past three years, the whole biochemistry and physiology of that area has changed. It's become very acidic. So the chance that your bone graft or your, two, your implant works there the first time around is very small. So when you see a chronic, there are a couple of things that can be done. Either we clean it up and not do anything and let the patient go heal, come back in three months, or you need to have sodium bicarbonate in your office, or clean it up and then take a chunk of cotton uh, soak it with sodium bicarbonate, just put it in that hole and then go have tea, coffee, see another patient, let it sit there for 20 minutes or so, and then come back to it. Sodium bicarbonate is a buffer for acid, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now this doesn't necessarily 100% combat that acidic issue, but it increases the chance of success. In terms of patient management, you all know it's always difficult and counterproductive to reschedule patients for a procedure. People are busy, people, you know, mm -hmm. they move, somebody else says, oh, you got to go to my dentist and never come back to you. So if you have planned uh, for a particular procedure, if you reschedule that plan, the chance that you actually end up doing will decrease probably 40, 50 percent. Have you all noticed yeah. that? Yeah. Right. You got to do it. If they're there for that procedure, mm -hmm. get it done right there and then postponing it, especially in a few months, the chance that you're actually doing it will diminish less than half. Mm -hmm. So that, that's why I'm saying the sodium bicarbonate is a day saver because it's always easy to say, okay, close it up, see the patient after three months. Yeah, but you want to do the, you're there to do the procedure, you want to do the procedure, you put the time, patient has paid. So if there is a way to get to it that day, then it's better.